This morning we have Richard P. Smith in the studio with us. You are a outdoor writer and photographer, uh, long known perhaps. You've uh, seen him on Discovering. You've done a number of Discovering episodes over the years. Right. Um, but thank you for coming in this morning. I'm excited to chat with you. My pleasure. I'm grateful for the opportunity to talk about my new book. Yeah, so before we get to the new book, uh, for someone maybe that this is the first time hearing you talk, um, explain what you've done over the years and your passion. Well, I've written 26 books. Uh, I'm a full-time outdoor writer. I started writing in high school and I've been writing ever since. Um, most of the writing I do is about hunting, deer hunting, bear hunting, and wildlife. But this latest book is a major shift. And, and why did you do something different? You, you have a, a bag of books there. A lot of them are about deer and bear and, like you said, wildlife. This one, as you can see, it has zero animals on the cover. So, <laughs> so what made you switch and do something different? Well, I feel very strongly about having a clean environment and the climate change that's underway in this country. And Michigan has set an excellent example of the benefits of having a container deposit law. We've reduced greenhouse gases over the 45 years. The law has been in effect uh, to the effect uh, comparable to taking millions of cars off the road for a year. Saves enough energy to power millions of homes for a year. Mm -hmm. If all of the states, sadly only 10 states in the country have container deposit laws. If all of the states had container deposit laws, it would increase recycling, be better for the environment, better for the economy, and it would have a positive impact on reducing climate change. So your book, it's called Nickel and Dime Your Way to Extra Dollars. So while saving the planet, I should add. Exactly. Um, so obviously there is the component of um, protecting the environment, but there's also the component of, hey, put some extra money in your pocket. Exactly. As I've done over the last three years, while researching this book, I've collected over 100,000 bottles and cans along roadways, out of garbage cans, that I've returned and recycled, making $10,000, over $10,000 over those three years. That's wild. And anybody can do it. There's a lot of people who don't want to return cans and bottles. Yeah. They discard them. However, one of the chapters in the book is about organizations like the Lions Club and Marquette. Sure. The uh, Moosewood Nature Center, they all conduct can and bottle drives. People who don't want to return them themselves can take them to an organization to benefit their fundraising. Does it blow your mind that you were able to find that many pot bottles still on the side of the road and in the woods? It does. It constantly yeah. amazes me. Yeah. But. It, that's the way it is. Yeah. There's millions of dollars in non-returnable bottles and cans every year. I'm only <laughs> putting a small dent in it. Sure, I sure. wrote the book to try and encourage more people to do the same thing. Well, there is a picture of the Amazon page. If you Google uh, the, or Google, or search rather, uh, the name of the book on Amazon, this is what will come up. You can uh, read a little bit more about it. We have the cover in the back um, as well. And if you want to check out all, how many books did you say you? I've written 26, 26. but there's about a dozen that are in print right now. Okay, and you actually have your own publication company as well. My wife and I uh, yeah. have published most of our books. Yeah. So you can also go to uh, Richard's website, which is richardpsmith.com. So easy. Right, exactly. So easy. And this is an affordable book. I think I, I saw it was 16 bucks, 20 bucks. Yeah, 15. 15. I, I think this book would be perfect for school libraries. Mm. Youngsters that are growing up now are going to have to deal with climate change and the environment. Uh, they can see the benefits of our container a lot. Some of your viewers are in Wisconsin that doesn't currently have one. I'd like to see some class projects yeah. in Wisconsin to try and adopt a container deposit law in Wisconsin. Yeah. Well, uh, step one of a, a bigger mission, for sure. Thank yes. you so much for coming on this morning and sharing this. We'll put all of this information on our website, make it really easy for you to find uh, the link to purchase it if you're interested. Thanks again. Well, thank you. Yeah.